Tip number one, make eye contact with your audience. Make sure you feel connected to them and they'll feel connected to your message. That's in your body centering, your eye contact and open chest. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, what a lovely ceremony it was. Firstly, I'd like to start by saying congratulations to the bride and groom, Steve and Sophie, or now Mr and Mrs Johnson, and as we'll all have to call them. Fantastic. Beautiful. Succinct, clear, to the point. All right, let's do the negative version of that, clouding everything. Um, good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm sorry, I've, I've, lost my, <laughs> I've lost my place. Um, uh, well, oh, here we are. Uh, congratulations, Steve, and your new bride on your on your on your on your wonderful wedding day. We've we've had good good weather for it. Um, uh, well, I'd just like to start by uh, by oh, um, final catastrophe. Absolutely brilliant. You know, so we get the feeling that you don't even know whose whose party this is by mm -hmm. that kind of behaviour, and it's entirely <laughs> inappropriate for the occasion. Tip number two: We've got to make sure that there's no finger wagging at the audience, there's no fist pounding unnecessarily on tabletops, and you keep your body wide and not narrow and restricted, and certainly no hands in pockets. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the ceremony as much as I did. It was wonderful. Um, Firstly, we should start by all of us saying congratulations to Steve and Sophie, or Mr and Mrs Johnson, as we'll all now have to call them. Congratulations. I hope you have a very long life together. Perfect gesture. Nice open palm, nice and clear, not fiddling around. Let's try hopping, fingers in, hands in pockets, then a bit of finger wagging and a bit of fist pounding. Um, well, I, we should start by saying congratulations to, uh, to Steve and Sophie, or Mr and, Mrs., um, Mr and Mrs Johnson, as we'll have to call them now. Um, I, I don't know if you remember, Steve, do you remember? Well, Sophie, you might remember as well, any of you might remember. But when we were, you remember we were at college and we were in the car with, um, what's her name, with, uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, one. Good, uh, good, good. Isn't that amazing? That effect just kind of narrows down the, uh, the audience reception. They just feel it's just one person being pointed to. They feel implicated we feel left out so don't feel the rest of us have to be excluded include us all in that tip number three no ums or ahs and don't fade out at the end of a sentence keep the breath underneath well I'd like to start with a joke which uh, I remember from when we were both at school do you remember those times Steve well I'm going to tell you a nice story about that anyway which I'm sure everyone is going to like to hear fantastic Keep the dynamic right the way through to the end of the thought. That's fantastic. Let's do the flip side, the negative end of speech making with ums and ahs. Go. Well, um, um, I'm going to start with, uh, with, <coughs> with, with uh, telling a story about, do you remember when we were at, we were at, we were at school together? Um, uh, well, it's a kind of a joke as opposed to a story. So, um, uh, we... Um, brilliant, brilliant. So what we get are pauses. And what we get is something that we're in, in absolutely embarrassed out here because we think, are you in command or not? And where are you going to get to the point? 